and then basically one day I had a vision and um, you know father's face was shining like the 10,000 suns mm. um, in this vision and it was so brilliant I could not you know approach it so to speak um, but at the same time I saw father's body in hell uh, I'm sorry in prison he was in prison mm. as well and at the same time I could see that his spirit was in hell Wow right so his body was in prison and his spirit was like a mirrored in hell <clears throat> and in in this play in the, in hell uh, he was there was like these demons that were ripping apart these souls right mm. and father was saying he was shouting at demons you know uh, take my body take my body instead let let my children go mm. right mm. so then the demons would you know cast down the you know flesh that they're eating and the mm. people that they are devouring mm. and they would just grab father and then you know split him apart <clears throat> mm. and uh, you know, when I saw this vision it really uh, really I had a breakthrough a spiritual breakthrough because I realized that when father went through those prisons and all the different six life and death uh, tortures and uh, uh, tribulations mm -hmm. that actually those were also father was going on those things he was willingly going to those places mm. even though he could have fled the countries etc he was willingly going there to be tortured mm. uh, for the sake of me for the sake of my family for the sake of my tribe my future generations etc right mm. and once I understood that father did that for me mm. instead of some kind of detached you know suffering no. Um, it was a suffering that was for my own salvation, my mm. and my family's salvation. That we could stand righteous before God because of that, because of that uh, right. indemnity that Father had to pay. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so those kind of uh, seven. So so at the time, I just you know uh, you know was inspired to call the seven deaths and resurrections. Mm. Um, that that a father's love is one that will not only lay their life down for their friends, but lay their life again and again and again and again and again and again and again mm. for their children. Mm. And so this was like an ontological jump from what Jesus says about because he was he was never a physical parent mm. or father. Right? <laughs> um, but what the, <clears throat> I realized what True Father was talking about when he was talking about true love is that kind of love that he actually actualized, mm -hmm. you know, that he actually went through for all, in all those different uh, uh, imprisonments, tortures, uh, crucifixions, etc. Mm -hmm. And that all those things are not some detached suffering or some detached payment of spiritual uh, indemnity or, you know, spiritual... Uh, uh, prowess but that they were those were those are tribulations and the path he had to walk to liberate me from mm. from my own uh, unrighteousness before God mm. right and to be able to allow me and my family my children instead of my grandchildren to stand in front of God mm. um, and uh, yeah once God gave me that uh, that revelation and that uh, vision that totally transformed my understanding of father and my relationship with him because before then he was a great spiritual teacher and a mm. great uh, man and a great you know uh, leader etc uh, and all those things and I didn't really know the meaning of Messiah or Savior but after that that kind of revelation mm. then I could understand what father was he was the Savior he was my savior. He saved me mm. from my own damnation. He saved me from my own sin. He saved me from unrighteousness. And in that state, no one can stand in front of God. Right. right? <clears throat> but because he paid the indemnity and paid the price for me, uh, I don't have to walk that course, but I can stand in front of God. Mm. You know. And, uh, and that was a massive, 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 massive uh, shift. Mm. You know, it was a massive breakthrough, 
and uh, in realization of who Father was, mm. you know, and uh, what kind of value he had. What what he was not just a teacher or a prophet, you know. Right. And he, he, you know, Messiah wasn't just another word for a prophet. Right. You know, he was a savior of mankind, a savior um, who uh, allows us to stand righteous before God, not because we're righteous, but because what he has done and the price he has paid is completely and perfectly righteous. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you. So that was, I think, a real breakthrough for me. For me. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember Father, you know, he really was pushing, he always was really encouraging and pushing us, challenging us to fulfill our portion of responsibility. Mm -hmm. But what I hear you saying is we should not forget right. what, what he... Yes, yes, right, right. Yeah, the 96%. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the 96%. Right. Um, we have a portion of responsibility that we either can walk to or walk away from, you know. Right. We can either stand in agreement or stand in disagreement, you know. Um, but it would be deluded to say that we're the ones who paid the indemnity. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you talk about the time? You, you, you I, I know you were very active with being the Korean church and many things, but then Father asked you to drop all of that and mm -hmm. spend two years, I think, with him. Can you talk about that time and what was that like and what did you, what did you learn and, you know? Oh, it was a really amazing time. I think it was a really, it was, you know, probably one of the most blessed times in my life because, you know, uh, we had all these, you know, Father had entrusted everything to us, you know, I was head of, uh, you know, the entire world church. World Mission Department, World UPF, World Youth Federation, World Carp, everything. I mean, Father entrusted everything, you know, to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's like a massive responsibility. And you, uh, in doing that kind of work, and you have all these things, you stay busy, busy, whatever, um, it's easy for you to get sidetracked and lose your relationship with God, you know, mm -hmm. or not invest in it. Mm -hmm. um, because you're so busy with all the other activities that are going on, you know. And plus, I was leading, you know, Chambokung uh, there, the, the main church there um, in Seoul. So it was, it was just a, uh, it was like a, you know, whirlwind of activity all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we were doing. I was training my Hun uh We were doing, you know, spiritual practice from two thirty in the morning, you know, every single day without, you know, any breaks, any feel, you know. And um, so it was, it was, it was very kind of a, uh, a whirlwind kind of time. Um, and also, you know, in those kind of positions, <clears throat> there's always a temptation to believe that you're doing so much work, you know, and that by doing a lot of work, you're actually serving God more, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but what Father, when Father called me to serve, you know, just be with Him, um, it was, it was a huge, ch huge change, uh, because here now all of a sudden I could not, I didn't have a schedule, could not make a schedule, uh, I did not have any appointments, um, I could not schedule anything with people. People wanted to meet me from outside, VIPs or whatever, couldn't do it, you know. <laughs> um, I couldn't go visit families. That was something we did every week. You know, we would visit normal church members, go to their houses, and you know. Uh, do fun stuff with them, uh, buy them pizza and stuff like that. I didn't know GMO, GMO at the time, hmm. but uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, but uh, we couldn't do anything. All, all that had to drop, hmm. you know. And all the big events, all the stuff drop. I had to drop everything. It was at first. It was just time spent just being with Father, because see, Father's always on the move too. So he's always traveling. He's always going to you know, the states, coming back to Korea. So there was a world tour all of a sudden that he scheduled and did, you know, so all those kind of things. Um, but just actually, just basically being with Father, going with him, fishing constantly, going with him, you know, uh, Las Vegas all the time. So we would be fishing on Lake Mead or in the next day we could be fishing on the Pacific Ocean, you know. 
but it was always this, so, so it was very different. Um, and, you know, at the time I wasn't a huge fisherman or something like that. Um, and so I would just, I would use that time to meditate. So I was like on the boat, I would meditate or I would just, you know, uh, try to do studies. Um, I'd be in the beginning and just try to get used to this kind of schedule because it's like a schedule of no schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you just have to go at the whim of where Father wants to go and wherever he's going to go, you, you have to go, you know, you know. You have no say in the matters, you have to totally surrender to it. Um, so it was an adjustment, you know, it was, it's, it's kind of very taxing. Yeah. At first it's very mentally taxing because you don't know what to expect, you know, it's always. But at some point I just uh, was able to release that, you know, that anxiety or that stress from it. And uh, just totally just ride and flow with my father, you know, and just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, instead of, you know, just uh, bickering, complaining, well, oh, I, I have my schedule and all that, you know, I, I can't do my work or this and that, what if things can fall up or whatever, you know, just let go of it all. Mm -hmm. None of that really matters, it really, really matters is being with father, you know. And um, so we had, I had just incredible times with father when I, when I let go of that. Then I could actually be myself. That's when I started showing like the different martial arts that I knew, I knew, and we would watch the UFC and mixed martial arts together. And you know, when Father was not on the boat, and we would come back and we would watch martial arts contests and say, "This is," you know. Then I would do demonstrations, and he would make me, you know, you know, uh, tap out and choke out, and all the security guards, <laughs> 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 you know, things like that. And so. <laughs> So it, it really became a tremendous uh, time. It was just like I was spending time with, uh, you know, uh, with Father in such an intimate way. You know, we were bonding in such an intimate way, you know, and uh, I just felt that Father just, he could, he totally, uh, you know, uh, like I was surprised that he loved the fact that I, I knew all these, you know, I did all these martial arts, you know, and because uh, I had kind of hidden them from the public. I had not shown that I, I do this, I always wanted to keep them kind of, you know, um, but Father just totally embraced it, and, um, and he just, you know, he just was so excited about it, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, when there were like storm warnings, and like the, the government would shut down like the oceans, uh, so you would not be able to go out, I mean, they would do storm or hurricane warnings, and we would be on an island, right, in the south of Korea, in the middle of nowhere on a tiny island, so then, there would be, you know, if there's a hurricane going by, then you can't go out on the ocean. So we'd be stuck indoors. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, basically we would have already downloaded all these, you know, MMA, you know, fights and, you know, battles. And, uh, you know, Father would watch it. And then I would, you know, I would point out things of what they're doing, what they're trying to do, and kind of do commentary. And uh, it was so, it was so uh, amazing. It was a really amazing time because I could really bond, bond with Father as Father and Son, you know, and uh, uh, I had great times, great moments where I, uh, where, when, we, when we went fishing, you know, when Father would take a nap, I could just go in the cabin with him alone and just lay down and, and sleep right next to him, watch him. Mm. You know, I have, I have nice, I wonderful pictures of him, you know, just resting like that. And um, very, very intimate times, you know. That I got to spend with Father, and I think that's in the end that was so important because it showed me it's not about religion and you know making yourself religiously pure and doing all these conditions and all these work and all this stuff. It's not really in the end. It's not really about that. Mm -hmm. That's really to show men, you know, or to try to prove to people that you are a good person, right? But what really matters is not religion, but your relationship. And that's what Father brought me into. He brought me into that relationship with Him that was beyond the religiosity of Him, you know? Him as a religious leader or religious head or religious pope or religious, you know, it brought me into a real relationship with Him. You know, that was, that was so intimate. It was so, it was so real. It was so filled with um, joy and affection and acceptance and, uh, and embracing, you know? I mean, all these things that I thought that I could not show as a religious leader, you know, 
like mixed martial arts, gets really bloody. I mean, it gets really, really bloody, right, when they're fighting. And you do all sorts of nasty stuff, you know. Um, and I just felt, you know, in my image as a religious leader who meditates like hours and hours a day, it just didn't fit, you know, in my own box of my of my own self-image, you know. And uh, but that that just got shattered. It just got liberated. And I was able to, to to embrace that warrior side too, and Father totally embraced it, you know. So that was like amazing. And I believe that is that time that get, got me through all the tough times after when Father passed, and all that craziness happened. Um, it was that relationship that I had with Father uh, that he brought me into, that really was able to uh, nourish me uh, in a time of despair and emptiness. Uh, when 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 everything, when we, when we lost everything, and, you know, uh, even our own mother, you know, turned against us and things like that. So, <laughs> so you know, I, that period of time, I think, is probably the most valuable time that Father ever bestowed upon me, you know. And as his successor and heir, I think, without that understanding, I would just be teaching religion about Ramon, you know, and not relationships. You know, and that's such a massive, 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 massive shift. Mm -hmm. You know, I would just be teaching theology of our Ramon, not the actual person of God, the person of Christ, the person that we're supposed to know and become intimate with and, and share our lives with. You know, so yeah, it's, it was, I think it was a, it was, it was a massive, massive gift that Father, grace that Father gave me. You know, I would, because I'm a prankster, so I love, I love, you know, when she's all nervous and stuff like that, you know, why is she changing and everybody's trying to, you know, not supposed to be in there. <laughs> then I would sneak, I would like peek in and like, but it peek in in a way that she knew I'm peeking in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then she'd be like, yeah, 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 get out of Right, so, yeah, that's, I, I used to fool around with it like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's not like, you know, yeah. but it's not like, but, you know, I mean, mother was a more of a, tradi you know, she was a very kind of strict Korean mother. Right, right. So they're very rigid, you know, they're like, um, you know, if the clothes don't fit, or, you know, if the clothes don't match, or if they're not good for the image, and it's all about, you know, image, and it's all about honor. Right. So Eastern culture is very like, much like that. And she's not the only person like that. There's a lot, most Korean and Asian women are mm. like that. Right. There are a lot about images, especially if they're from a, you know, a, a high-profile family. So, I mean, but I was, I was, you know, she, she would always try to dress me up in polo outfits and all this. I hated that stuff. I was a skateboarder. I dressed in raggedy clothes. <laughs> you know, that drove her nuts. I grew my hair out long, you know, when I was younger. <laughs> that drove her nuts, you know. <laughs> and then I'd be, you know, then I was trading with Buddhist monks. That drove her nuts, <laughs> you know. So, I would never want to be put in the box of, you know, of that kind of upper class preppy kid. Right. I hated that. I was like my absolute nightmare. All my friends in high school were minorities, black kids, Hispanic kids, Italian, you know, uh, kids. Right. Like my best friends, you know. So I did not get along with that whole preppy white um, elite sort of elite culture. Right. Uh, it was very foreign to me, you know. Um, but sort of in that in that realm, since we were a high profile family. There was the pressure of trying to always put the kids in that box, right? Because we were, you know, schmooze with the elites, you know. Right. right. <laughs> but I just, I always, uh, yeah. I, for me, I never, I never, my spirit just uh, cried out against being put in that box. Yeah. Actually, can, I'm very interested. The thing you just said, yeah. you know, the father chose to have you grow up in America mm -hmm. and I'm just I've been thinking about that a little bit because you know what if, what if you had grown up in Korea you know how 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 did growing up in America like even what you just said about knowing yeah. minority kids maybe you wouldn't sure. have known it though right? that's right that's right you know right. and that's absolutely right we would have we would just been like the normal you know um, big corporation kids you know like these spoiled Brats who, um, you know, just in super elites, you know. Mm -hmm. I kind of rebelled against that when I was younger, you know. Mm -hmm. I did not, that's why I, I started, you know, training like 
uh, you know, like rough martial arts and combat martial arts. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're, you're training with street fighters, you're training with, you know, professional fighters, you're training with mm -hmm. guys who fight in rings or at the time cages or bare knuckled. I mean, these are people you're training with. They're not, they're not what you would call the polo elite. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, tattooed all over from head to toe. These are the guys you're sweating on, you know, sweating with, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, so it was a totally different culture. And so I kind of, I, I don't know, I, you know, just God led me away from that kind of uh, elitist culture that everybody's trying to force us into. Right. Especially the ladies. They like, they like to force us into this kind of culture. So right. Make the boys all you know, uh, sort of gentleman, all this kind of thing. And I, I am a gentleman, but, right. but you know, like I'm so grateful I was able to experience that subculture. Right. Like subculture of, you know, all these fighters and all these, you know, mm -hmm. you know, people who are not considered to be, you know, um, you know, uh, elitists or elite right. members of society, you know. Mm -hmm. But they're actually tremendous uh, in like their fighting spirit or uh, you know in their skill or in, in, in their mm. passion for studying you know mm. uh, martial arts or whatever <clears throat> you know so I'm so grateful that I was able to have total exposure and training within this kind of subculture right. um, and that's like that was like really a huge right. I think a really great benefit something that we would never be able to have in Korea Mm -hmm. uh, that much exposure to, you know, minorities and things like that, mm -hmm. and or these kind of subcultures, you know, mm -hmm. like these, mm -hmm. you know, fight club, you know, subcultures. Right. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't fit in the sort of right. rubric of mm -hmm. the big elites, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that, I think that was really important. And so that, I think sp spiritually God kind of, like, allowed me to go through that because that really allows me to understand freedom and responsibility. Right. Why, why centralizing power around the elites is so dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's very dangerous, and it's always consistently through history proven to be dangerous. Right. Um, yeah. So I mean, that that was like, a, I think, a big benefit mm -hmm. growing up in the West. Mm -hmm. You know, the person that probably had the biggest influence on me was Young Jin Young. He's the one who had one year. He was one year above me, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he he like. He trained me for like a year to be able to do well in school. Mm -hmm. I was always like a terrible student, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is the reason why I could not get into anything in Boston. I wasn't part of the Boston group, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and the whole thing there because I, I just I was just so bad in school. I couldn't get into anything, mm -hmm. you know. So he, after high school, he basically trained me for one year mm -hmm. to do study. How to study well, how to excel in, in academics, and, that. Mm -hmm. and um, but it was more than that because he really invested in me, and he really, mm -hmm. he really cared for me. He was very compassionate, even though he was one year older. He was not abusive, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so <clears throat> you know he had a very big mm -hmm. impact on on me when I was younger. You know, mm -hmm. he was very, and then of course, you know, I, I think. All my brothers and sisters, you know, you know, they they contributed, uh, you know, valuable ways, invaluable ways, invaluable ways to to my own development. Like that. So, you know, uh, you know, you know, we love them. You know, they there's a lot of things that people don't know about the whole situation, etc. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, but uh, and it, it's easy to just jump on them <clears throat> and things like that. But um, you know. In the end, there are also people that have to find faith too. Right. There are also people that have to find faith in Father, whether they believe in Him or not. But of course, when we that's when we were younger. Of course, when we we're older, I think the most uh, you know obviously everybody knows Kuk Jin Hyung is really he he for me he has he has a massive impact on me mm -hmm. in terms of my own uh, understanding of economics about free markets about understanding. Uh, what freedom is, how valuable freedom is. Mm -hmm. uh, freedom Society, my father was so incredibly ecstatic and uh, delighted when he was doing Strong Korea, Strong Japan, Strong America. Right. Like trying to help these countries 
uh, become free again, and like, like watch out for these other powers that may come, you know. Right. And so Father was absolutely uh, delighted about those kind of, you know, the identification of Archangel as government as Archangel. Right. right? That was a first. Yeah. But Father was so excited about that because he, he had been persecuted by, constantly by the Archangel in a centralized format, which was government. Right. Wherever he went, Japan, Korea, North Korea, South Korea, U, the U.S., wherever it was. And so I, when I shared that with Father, he was so, he was like, oh, he's like, oh, oh, and he was so like, there's a huge, your father was so excited about that. Right. And um, I think for, Kuk Jin Hyung has just such a genius in terms of uh, uh, understanding organization, understanding you know, a culture of an organization, understanding you know, honor and integrity. He's a real warrior, so he's a real, he abides by the honor code. Mm. You know, so I mean, he, he in terms of leadership, and Kuk Jin, I have learned so much from Kuk Jin Hyung. Right. You know, uh, as an adult. Right. You know, so as an adult, I think when we're younger, it's probably you know, uh, you know, you know, my other, some other siblings at different times. But well, as an adult, you know, uh, you know, learning from Kuk Chin Young and understanding what leadership is and how to understand organization and how to understand you know things like that. Mm -hmm. Which is really a diff separate field, you know, right. from theology. Right. <laughs> Learning about, you know, macroeconomics and things like that. And that is a se totally separate field. Right. But it's really important to understand. Can you talk yeah, about I mean, we were hoping that mother would humble herself before father and lift him up. Yeah. You know, if she was that, if she was, you know, like the mother Teresa who would humble herself before Christ. Yeah. And you know, just praise Him and glorify Him and share all the deep, intimate things of love and all the deep, intimate moments she had with Him and all the beautiful, you know, close close moments that she was gifted. Mm -hmm. And if she shared that, if she glorified Him and if she, if she lifted Him up as, his, as her Savior, if she lifted Him up as His, as, his, as her Messiah, mm -hmm. you know, that she was a sinner, that she was, she's, you know, as the Bible says, filthy rags before God, but then through Christ, through Father, she was reborn and she was made new and she was a new creature. Right. She could, and then she could stand in this in this position with Father. Right. Now, if she if she did that, she would be a true mother. Right. She would be a mother that that perfected the object position, which right. is the perfection of Eve. Right. Perfection of Eve is not to sit in the subject position. Eve is not the subject. Right. The perfection of Eve is to perfect the object partner, which is to lift up the subject. Right. which is to love the subject more than anybody else. Right. And if she did that, it would have been glory, 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 all, all worldwide. I mean, the whole world would bow to her. Right. You know, uh, right. Uh, if she stood in that vein, she would be standing directly where me and Kuk Jung were. Because right. we were, we were, that was our mission, that was our purpose. Right. Um, and if she stood there with us, then we would have, you know, already, we had made such a enormous foundation in the East. That had never been created, you know. Like Kuk, like Kuk Jung had, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you know, had already had met with the, the current president of Japan and Korea mm -hmm. before they became president. Right. He had already helped numerous, uh, uh, you know, elite, uh, you know, the sort of uh, the, up, the, uh, the political class, uh, and, and worked with them uh, in educating them about like strong Korea. He was invited to all these major, major, you know five-star general events for him to speak about why Korea should be a strong nation because mm -hmm. you, you know etc he had been already inducted by the top CEOs into the top 200 conglomerates you know business groups in Korea mm -hmm. uh, he had been put on the top of the CEO magazine uh, for the first time in, in history we all are all the businesses were profitable you know so there was a massive shift and so that's the whole upper uh, you know the sort of the the, the 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 movers and shakers of Korea and Asia were already realizing that this guy was you know this guy is up and coming, massive massive up and coming leader, mm -hmm. and you know he was invited to different Samsung uh, events and LG events. He ended up recruiting a lot of their people into the Cheta and things like that. Very very highly capable people, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, 
So it was a, such a massive change, and this had never been done before mm -hmm. uh, in Korea. You know, nobody had, the, the businesses were abysmal. They were run by you know people who had you know no notion of business. Their, the idea of business was getting subsidies from father. <laughs> so, you know, basically communists running these things, and they have no idea what it means to compete in the free market, right. which he had already done with his business for the last twenty years, right. and become top ten in his industry. Right. You know, with a with a bankrupt company. Right. <clears throat> you know, so you know he knew he knew the game. He knew the free market competition, you know, how to compete in that world. Right. And so he had created such a massive foundation. Uh, he had already created inroads with the top levels of government, uh, the Department of Defense uh, um, uh, vice chair was at our events, the current vice chairs were at our events. That's like, that's like having, you know, right, the, the, the vice chair of the Department of Homeland Security or something coming to your events, right? It's like right. massive, you know, people right uh, and on the other on the other side in the religious world I was you know we had made great inroads with you know the, the largest Buddhist organization millions and millions of uh, people in that organization um, the head monk came to our temple came to our sanctuary you know I would go visit them frequently um, uh, so we were also in the religious realm too we were already making inroads with all these very national religious leaders mm -hmm. you know um, so it was like it was at a time where it was like you know and internally we we're getting rid of all the corruption and the lobby groups and the you know the, 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 the these these little institutions that all these little fiefdoms that all these Korean leaders had built you know we were just dismantling them and their abuse of the Japanese members right so we were dismantling this whole mm -hmm. racket mm -hmm. um, and a uh, uh, system of sort of, you know, exploitation. And Father was fully allowing us to do it. He was fully giving us, uh, giving us all the approvals to do it. Because every major decision, we, we, we went to Father for approval. He would actually have to sign on, on or off on it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, so that was a massive, massive, you know, change. Mm -hmm. Now, and so... And that was our, that was me and Kuk Chung, and that was really our, uh, you know, our sort of, you know, brotherly, you know, uh, pact that we would, we would, we would work to free the people uh, from the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the um, iron hand of these Korean leaders that created these systems over them. Right. You know, and then of course, scapegoated father as having done this, but father really, he was not a micromanager. He didn't, he, he would let people, he would he would do things and bless people to do it but then they would be able to create their own things right he would not micromanage everything right he's not a micromanager control freak right you know and so it really the fruit of uh, of what the church had become was all these little fiefdoms of competing korean blocks of little criminal organizations basically right. trying to sub steal as much as they could mm -hmm. um, and then either you know scapegoat you know, uh, father or his family, you know, right. either which way. Right. Um, so basically that racket was being broken up and uh, right. father was, you know, uh, right. uh, he was totally allowing us to break that up. Right. And basically if mother would, if she stayed in her position, if she lifted up father and she realized that her sons are working for the freedom of the people, right. Uh, boy, she would have had tremendous success. Yeah. She would have tremendous victory. You know. Yeah. She would have. She would have been a tremendous woman. Yeah. You know, and she would have been. She would have been honored as the true mother. Yeah. You know? Right. You know, instead of what she has become now. Yes. Yeah. Very moving to me was, really that you, Cook Chenin, and Yeonin, you wanted. Mother to be a success. Yeah, of course. I mean, Kuk Chung had set up her whole, yeah. you know, Sung Yo Hye, uh Mission Foundation so that she would have resources, so she wouldn't have to beg people. You know, she had like half a billion dollars, which is all gone, basically now. Yeah. Because she's basically been robbed of it by people who tell them they love her. And yeah. Grant me $40 million, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's gone. I mean, it's basically gone, <clears throat> from what I hear. Right. Um, 
and you can of course see how they're trying to uh, strangle even tighter and tighter the the Japanese yeah uh, harder and harder yeah you know so again if she if she would if she stayed in her position yeah as the object and not lusted after right a position which is not hers right then she would have been glorified she would have perfected Eve yeah yeah you know? and that's the kind of tragedy is that she because of her lust of power she fell and she lost that position she lost the glory that she could have had yeah but that doesn't mean Father's victory is not mm. over. The kingdom will come, but it will come through, and not through blessing, but through tribulation, as right. Father prophesied. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think there was always an underlying, you know, realization <clears throat> that, you know, Mother kind of saw herself as a victim, so she kind of framed her own self-identity as a victim. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a victim. I'm in the circumstance, and. You know, Father has all the power, and you know, I can't say anything. I don't have a voice, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's all these things I have to hide, and six marries, and uh, whatever, whatever. And you can still see family fraud is still trying to hide this stuff, right? Right? Because they don't know they they because when it comes when it comes to it, they don't believe Father was the Messiah because right. they believe the same stuff she believes, right? Right? That it was that he has had weakness. I mean, this is what their leadership says mm -hmm. on record, right? So this is. You know, so clearly they don't believe in Father as Messiah. So they're, so so we knew that she. Everybody knew that she had like a victimized mentality, but nobody knew the extent to which she would pursue that. You know, uh, nobody knew the extent to which she would aggressively pursue sort of vengeance against that. You know what I mean? Right. And this is what I think is so shocking and surprising for people. Right. You know, and of course, it was absolutely, utterly uh, shocking to us and distasteful to us when we, when we had heard her vitriol after Father passed. Right. You know, uh, and that's why, of course, we now people know that's why we didn't help her. We cannot help her. We had to walk away from her. And uh, that's very important that Cain and Abel have to separate from, from their mother, who separates from Father. Right. Without that, freedom can't come. If we stayed with her, we would have been part of the. We were in part of desecrating Father, right? So there would be no way for judge for the kingdom to come, right? Right. But because Cain and Abel separated, and because Cain and Abel stayed true to Father, who is the subject in the center, mm -hmm. then even though she had has done this and lost her position as true mother, still the kingdom will come. But it will come through the three kingships, right? And through you know uh, the three kingships that Father Himself has crowned. Right. Um, so in that. In that sense, my wife then has to play the role of now fill the position of Eve and play the role of true mother to right. fulfill what she has fallen right. out of. You know, um, but that whole situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was, that was a massively, radically surprising thing. Nobody assumed, nobody knew uh, the extent. I mean, towards the end, we had seen, of course, her getting a larger, larger fight with Father, and you know, saying that he was from fallen blood lineage, and uh, you know, his Father saying to her, "He's going to divorce her." And so we had seen those kind of things. Right. Um, so we knew that it was escalating, but you know, before then, like when we didn't have, I don't, when Chung Pyong wasn't there, I don't think it was as bad. Maybe it was just because I was younger and I didn't, I wasn't privy to all these things. Mm -hmm. But. You know, after Chung Pyo, we could see really a larger arrogance building in her. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I created this for Father. Without me, it would never have been. Without my Han lineage, it would never, you know, without Han Hong Han money, it would never have been done. This, you know, the, all this glory is, for, you know, was made by me. You know, mm -hmm. like the stadium was made by me. The palace was made by me. Even though the Father had given approval for the whole world church to come there, and that's why the nations poured in. Right. It was not because... She had some power or spiritual power, the Kim Hyonam, whatever. Father said, okay, I will allow her. I will allow all members to go to her lectures. Right, right. Which is the reason why they read. Right, right. No other reason. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, again, not giving glory to the one who is worthy of glory, which is God. Right. And his body, Christ. 
right? His physical manifestation was Christ. I mean, that's the role of any believer. Right. You know, any person, it's like white belt level, you have to understand, right, as a believer, is everything is for the glory of God. Right. So Mother had not even realized that level of understanding that everything has to be for her Father's glory, for God's glory. Right. No, you can't take credit for anything right. on your own. Right. Right. Because in the end, it's God who had, get, had set up everything for you to have some victory that you had, that you think is yours. Right. 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 So, you know, so it was, it was uh, you know, so obviously we knew she was, uh, you know, dissatisfied and felt that she was victimized and things like that. But we would, of course, it was so shocking. And now the world has seen right. the extent of her vengeance. Right. You know, going after everything that Father has established, even erasing him from the, the, the blessing of marriage ring. I mean, just totally, totally erasing him. Yeah. And, um, you know, we knew about this three years ago. We knew that she was pursuing on this path, uh, you know, towards her own, quote, you know, godhood, etc. Uh, so this is the reason why we had to step away from her. And number two, right. you know, we were trying our best to convince Mother to do otherwise. Right, right. Right, and I know, I know the public well enough that if, at that time, if I said stuff, I would just be an uproar and everybody would say, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah, but, but now, after three years, there's so much evidence. Right. That even though you want to deny it, you basically have to go in a hole and, you know, hide yourself from it now. I mean, right. you, it's, it's impo if you actually look at the evidence, it's impossible to deny that she has left Father. Yeah. Um, so... That's why I'm not an idiot. I understand <laughs> sociology, I understand psychology, I understand, mm -hmm. you know, I understand mob psychology, I understand, you know, uh, public public life. Right. I'm not an idiot, you know. Right. And these people may, you know, hope that I'm an idiot, but I'm not. Right. You know, there's a reason why Father chose me, and there's a reason why, you know, Father trusted me. Right. You know, we're not stupid, and right. we're we're honorable and loyal people. Yeah. You know, and material wealth does not titillate us. It does not. That is not our purpose for existence. Because that, if you have honor, that will follow. But if you only pursue that, you will lose all your honor. You will be dishonorable. Right. And only curses will follow you. Right. And, and judgment will follow you. Right. And that's what you see with family friends. Family friends. You know. Right. Basically, what they have pursued is they pursued the love of money, the love of assets, the love of power. Right. And they have not pursued the love of God. They have not pursued the love of, of the Messiah. They have not pursued the love of Christ, which is the reason why they're imploded. You know, and we we left not with nothing. We have nothing. Had absolutely zero here. Right. You know, I I was you know had to go on Obamacare. You know, I nothing. We had nothing. You know, <laughs> and uh, and I don't feel you know. I I feel that was the greatest blessing because we lost everything, but we gained everything because we didn't throw away Father. Right. You know, so now the level of people now they're standing up because they know that we're honorable people, and that we're that we are truly uh, fighting for justice, you know, and standing up for the King of Kings. Right. The people that are now standing up and 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 working uh, together with us and are connected to us by faith, not by organization, but by faith. Right. Because right. they have their power over their own ministries. Right. right? We don't micromanage their ministry. Right. They have freedom responsibility, but we're united by faith and love uh, in. In, the, in Christ right. and the pe the level of people that are now you know are, are coming forth and it's just amazing I mean they're they're truly honorable people that are that are gathering you know it's not like these you know sort of money prostitutes or like these right. you know people who are profit trying to profiteer off you know these kind of fakers you know right. the real people who actually believe in father and who who are willing to risk their reputations to be cursed and hated to stand up for father and 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 it is it is a great honor to be able to stand and walk with people like you know yourselves, people, mm -hmm. people like to walk with such high quality people, because mm -hmm. that's really what civilization is built upon, like the K types, so these these high quality people, right. who believe in honor and and believe in morals and believe in you know and try to pursue goodness, not just power and fame, money and, and vanity. You know, right. those are the R types. You know, but you can see the people who are gathering this. Now it's now a lot of more young people, but there's a lot of, you know, K-type quality young people gathering. You know? right. Not just like the freeloader types, not just the ones who want, 
want to, you know, poison other people, you know what I mean? Right. But like a people, young people who are actually really, you know, valuing their faith life. What is the meaning of being a blessed child, you know? Right. And people who really, you know, uh, and of course there's a whole mix. There's some wacky people too, there's some crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's what you get with freedom and, you know, freedom. Yeah. You know, freedom responsibility allows us, you know, all the transcend those, you know, yeah. imperfections, realize we're sinners and come into oneness uh, by faith and love in Christ. Right. You know, he purifies us and he makes us new. You know, so it's it's a real, it's a community of uh, not self-love and narcissism, it's a community of, 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 love, of the love of God, of understanding God's grace. It's really a community that's building worldwide that understands and is filled with praise and worship uh, of, for God's love. Mm. You know, and that's transformative. That builds civilization. That is the epitome of humanity. Right. Uh, you know, which is the reason why so many droves are now uh, coming to serve the true father as king kings. Again, mm. you know, to align with his kingship. Mm. You know, because they've seen us now. They've, I mean, you've, many of you who've lived in this area, you know, you've seen us in and out. You've seen how we are. You've seen how we live. You've seen... Mm. You know, you can't. You can only fake it for so long, right? I mean, yeah. you're gonna see the person if you live with them in and out. Yeah. You're gonna see what kind of person that is, person is. Yeah. You know, so all the fakery that happens in the palace, you have to. That only can exist when you're so distant from people. But if you're living on the ground with people, they're gonna see who you are, how you behave, how you raise your children, what values you have, are you a moral person. These all come to to reality. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think people have, you know, in the, in the, in the. Uh, Pocono, you know, mountains here. I mean, you guys have seen us, you know, that we're, we're not wackos, you know, we're, we're quite normal. And, 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 you know, we live for something greater than our own vanity and narcissism. You know? mm. We want to truly build the kingdom that Father was here to build, you know, and, uh, and lift him up as the king. You decide to take your family to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and I'm curious, why did you decide to come to Pennsylvania? And I know she spent a lot of time out in the the bar or the wilderness. In the midbar. <laughs> midbar. It oh, comes sorry. from the bar. Okay, midbar. <laughs> you should know you're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I was a bad student. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So can you talk about... Yeah, it was interesting. You know, yeah. I had to... Because the... Um, you know, when we had... We had to face the reality, you know, that mother was not going to change right. from her, you know, unfortunate decision right. to pursue, you know, her own uh, divinity. Right. Um, so when that was clear, I said, no, I'm going to pack up. I'm leaving. I'm leaving East Garden. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to stay here subsidized. I'm not going to stay here. With, I'm not going to stay tied to anything. So, like, they were trying to send us even a salary so that they can say, Oh, we're still he's, he's still, he's still on the payroll, we're still supporting. And I shut down my bank account in Korea, so they could not even send me a salary. Mm. So I cut off everything, so I, I, they would have no strings on me mm. to say that, no, 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 he's, you know, he's really being funded right now. No, we cut off everything, mm. <clears throat> you know. Mm. And because we know how Satan works. If he has those strings on you, he's going to always say, Ah, you know, yeah, he's acting like that, but really, you know, mother's paying for him, mm. right? Mm. And that's unfortunately what happens to a lot of true children. Right. They get these strings attached to them. Right. They can't run away from them. Right. You know, so I just had to cut them off, and I said, you know, I gotta leave this garden. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so we cut it off, and we packed up, and you know, uh, Cook Jung was already moving out of New York because. Um, his company, because all the laws were becoming anti-constitutional, right, and uh, communist, basically, you know. Right. And so his factory had to move, and basically had to move into somewhere that was more hospitable, mm -hmm. you know. And so we just, you know, we just moved with the spirit where our father guided us, mm. and you know, father basically guided us here. You know, first place we got was to PA, which stands for a daddy, stands for pa, stands for a father, you know. Hmm. And then the first place we got to was Lord's Valley. And we're like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Exit 34, Lord's Valley. It's like, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. And like the first house we came was seeing this house. Kuk Chung was actually looking at this house for him, so his own family. And he just brought me along. Hmm. You know, and so 
you know, and, 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 and this, we're in the Lord's Valley, we're in Sunrise Lakes, you know, community. Right. Right. You know, and it was like, it was just like, it's totally bizarre, you know. And then, you know, so basically, you know, so we started, you know, I, I, I was, you know, preparing to leave East Garden, so I needed to find some place, and Kukjum was already looking for a place, so I just, he just said, oh, well, let's go look together, and he tagged along. And, um, you know, so he started looking at places here. He met some people that were, like, supernaturally led to him, uh, you know, like Pete Helms and these people that, you know, were basically the top realtors, knew all the different properties before they were on on the market. Right. And then somehow God just led all that to happen, and then, you know, he ended up finding his property, 600 acres for, like, you know, a steel price and all that kind of stuff, and just huge swaths of, you know, wilderness were just, you know, handed to him, you know, mm. um, and uh, his, even his own house, you know, um, you know, uh, what was it, his own, his own house, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 154, this is the address of his own house, and that was the exact time of Father Sinwa, 154, you know, in the morning, mm. you know, and so like, we're in P we're in Pa, the sit country, the state of Pa, <laughs> and it's also known as the, the state of independence, right? Because right? Pennsylvania is where the, the Declaration of Independence was, was signed, right? Right, um, and um, you know, so it's it's like we left this, the Empire State, which is New York, and we came to the state of independence, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? So it was like right. it was like an amazing, uh, uh, you know, sort of sort of uh, sim a symbolic in Exodus away from the Empire, right. which is of course, you know, what family fraud is trying to do, is, is trying to uphold this false empire right. of, in narcissism. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and, and, and so, and all these other signs, you know, like 154, the exact time of Father Sun mm -hmm. you know, meeting all the t people here and just like being totally embraced in this community. Mm. And like, you know, the, all the, the, the people here are like all hunters and they're all like Second Amendment people. So they're uh, one of the highest rates of gun ownership in this, in this, in this, in this county, like in the country, right? It's like incredible, <clears throat> you know, so we were just totally embraced in mm -hmm. and, you know, the values that Father stood up for with Washington Times and people highly respect that here. Mm -hmm. My children were going to public school here and the teachers were saying, wow, I respect your grandfather. He, he made the Washington Times. That's awesome. He stood for conservative values. Wow. We never got that in New York. It was always, that's horrible. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, so it was another world, you know. So Father had led us here, and it was like the Pocono means the rocks. It means the rock. Right. And you know that, that biblical verse, you know, it's upon the rock that I stand. You know? Right. Matthew 7 is all about, you know, the wise man who builds his house upon the rock and when the wind blows and the, you know, the storms beat the house, etc. It doesn't fall away. Mm. You know, so it was like, it was such an amazing thing to be led out here into the wilderness. It is very wild out here. It's very, as anybody who comes out here, it's really wilderness out here. Uh, but there's such a pure beauty and a purity. Mm. And there's a real Americana here and a real freedom-loving spirit, mm. uh, which is so different from the communist type of ambience and ethos that rules big cities in New York, etc., right. New Jersey, etc. And, um, you know, so just, it just things just like, like expanded here so fast. Right. Uh, and we met such wonderful, uh, people who had also fled persecution who <laughs> 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 were in the mountain, the mountain men and women. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, just God just led us here. It was amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because even politically, Pennsylvania is like a purple state. So it's like a state, it's like a swing state, right. which sort of, sort of like is representative of like the mood of the entire country. Whether it's leaning to the right or to the left, mm -hmm. it's kind of like known as a purple state. Because right. it, has, it has some, you know, sort of social welfare stuff in the big cities. But it's also very highly conservative when it comes to like you know, Second Amendment and gun rights and, you know, self-defense and all this kind of thing. So it's like this very weird purple state, right. you know, and it kind of sort of sets the mood for the entire tone of America. Right. And, um, 
and like you know the places that we led to like Lords Valley, Promised Land Park. It's like all these biblical names in Newfoundland. It's like <laughs> it's like it's, like, it's amazing. <laughs> You know, so we just knew Father was leading us here. We had, when I came here, I had all these visions and uh, dreams and, you know, encounters with Father. Mm. You know, uh, supernatural encounters. And then that's where we had all these incredible, and then as we started worship and people started gathering, gathering, then we had even more and more outpouring of the Spirit, more and more supernatural uh, visions, sights, smells, sounds, mm. supernatural touch supernatural sensation all these kind of things the different five senses of the spirit for different people were being unlocked you know and so like that we could see the actual moving and the gifts of the holy spirit being given you know in this place in the wilderness you know <clears throat> and so i think there's a real reason father always went and retreated back into the wilderness there's a reason why jesus retreated into the wilderness mm -hmm. um, it's a place where you you know refine yourself it's a really a place where you you, you battle with Satan too in the wilderness, right? Mm. It's interesting, Jesus went to the wilderness and he had to battle Satan. You know, so it's, it's the same thing because we're like in the wilderness, but we also have to battle Satan worldwide. You know, and that this internet ministry is like battling Satan worldwide and helping mm. the people to be free right. from Satan's, Satan's uh, you know, false controls, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, and slavery. Mm. So it's like, it's, it's like the wilderness represents something so important because the Hebrew word for wilderness is midbar. That comes from the Hebrew word dabar, which means the word. So it's the place where you meet God's word, but it's also a place where you wrestle with Satan. You wrestle with Satan, you know. On the, you know, uh, it's in the wilderness where Jacob is wrestling the angel and then become Israel. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's in the wilderness where you actually have to wrestle and test yourself. Right. And, and you see what you're made of, you know. And I think that's why Father always went back into the wilderness. You know, when he was younger, he would go into the wilderness of Alaska or a different Amazon jungle and like, test himself there with fishing and hunting and living in the you know, open, whatever. I think the reason why God brought us here instead of mm. Korea or Japan is because there's still a remnant of freedom in America. Right. Like, for example, I used to be a gun owner but like when I was younger, but that was out of peer pressure because all my brothers did it. And so I, had to, I just had to... In order to be, you know, accepted as a man, you have to kind of do it. Right. But I ended, I, ended, I ended up giving it up. I rebelled against that because I said no. And, and so I pursued Buddhism. I became a pacifist. I became, uh, I, I left all my violent martial arts and I just studied meditation. And I became a vegetarian and I went the totally opposite way. Um, eventually, you know, and I learned a lot from Buddhism. I always, I'm very open about that mm -hmm. in terms of uh, understanding your mind, psychology. Uh, Etc. The, how the mind works. But one of the things that allowed me to leave Buddhism was f seeing its final social goals. Mm. So when you look at even Buddhist countries who are pacifists, etc., it's all it's all almost communist. Mm. Every single one. Even the history of Tibet, which people don't know of, because the, the, the current Dalai Lama is so charismatic. But the history of Tibet is total centralized control. Mm. A totally uh, privileged elite superclass of, of, of monks, clerics, mm. uh, etc. There's all sorts of sexual scandals in Tibetan history within the monks, monk class. Same that we see in Protestant, I'm sorry, not Protestant, Catholicism as well, with the sexual mm. uh, pedophilia and misconduct. That also exists in the history of a Tibetan Buddhism. Mm. <clears throat> uh, and there's a whole, there's many, many studies on that mm. uh, in the West. Uh, but um, so when I looked at the fundamental societies that Buddhism created, mm -hmm. because I invested my whole life purpose in Buddhism, and it was so in, so enriched individually by the practices, okay, mm -hmm. and it helps you understand your mind. Yes, individually, but then what happened when it expanded to, to, to the social level? Right. No, it did not create freedom. Right. It did not create freedom for people, even though the whole pursuit of Buddhism was for free liberation, mm -hmm. even Hinduism too and yoga, all these things. But what are the societies that it creates? It, cre it doesn't create freedom. Mm. It creates totalitarianism. It creates uh, monarchies which are not freedom-based. They are centralized monarchies, mm. right? And when you look at the actual history of the world, the real constitutional monarchies or the, co or the constitutional democracies that we see in the modern world that create the most freedom, where did that come from? Not Catholicism. Catholicism was direct supporters of fascism. They supported Nazis. 
Germany. They supported uh, Stalin. They were, they were supporting tyrants, dictators, mm. because they themselves are a hierarchical system. Mm. And it's only with Protestant Christianity that you see the advent of a decentralized local governance, because that's the whole nature of Protestant religion. It is a decentralized, localized religion. Mm. It, it does not have a hierarchy. Each, each, the faith is decentralized. It is about your faith with God. Right. And you're not beholden to one Methodist or Baptist, whatever. All those are connected by faith, not by organization. Right? <clears throat> so it's this kind of decentralized religion, this decentralized faith, this decentralized belief that we can connect with the transcendent from a decentralized position mm. is what, has, what created the American Constitution. Right. The idea that we don't need to go through a government to have our freedoms. That freedom comes directly from God. Mm -hmm. And so that's the real beginning of freedom in the modern world, which then spreads back to Europe, ironically. It starts in America and then freeds back to Europe, then goes to Australia, etc., all across the world. Mm -hmm. But how does that start? What theological, what religious realm does that start from? Not Islam, that never creates freedom. Not Buddhism, that never created freedom. Mm -hmm. Not uh, Catholicism, that never created freedom. It starts from Protestant Christianity. And it's that uh, Protestant Christianity which I hated and rebelled against because I grew up in a liberal culture which rails against Protestant Christianity. Yeah. And now I know why, because it's so communist. The liberal uh, culture is a communist culture. Right. It believes in centralized power. It believes in centralized government, centralized education, centralized monetary financing, centralized banking, central, everything centralized. Yeah. So the liberal liberal uh, uh, cultural spheres in the, U in the West are simply communist cultural spheres. That's all they are. They agree with the eight planks of Marx. Mm. So they're Marxists, they're socialists, they're communists, they're feminists, whatever you, name you want to put them or whatever panty or accoutrement you want to put on them, they're still socialists. Right. And now I realize why they hate Protestant Christianity so much, right. more than Catholicism, more than Islam, more than Buddhism, right. because Protestant Christianity is inherently rebellious against centralist centralized power. Right. It's inherently rebellious. Right. It's hard to control. Right. right. It's in, inherently to its bone and its spirit. It's rebellious against centralized power. So this is the this is why you see in such liberal cultures like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, uh, rich elite neighborhoods, you see such a hatred of Protestant Christianity and a demonization of Protestant Christianity. Right. Right. Even though that's the foundation for freedom, a decentralized freedom. Right. right. So I think the reason why Father brought us back here is so I could find that, that root again. Yeah. Like for the first time I've embraced my freedom as a man to be able to have self-defense, to carry uh, firearms and to learn that type of martial art. Mm -hmm. You know, and not just go to the traditional martial arts or to hand, an empty hand combat, but actually, you know, embrace my freedom as a man to be able to learn the, 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 the most dangerous type of martial arts, mm. right? And to be able to have that power of a, what Father called the peace police and peace militia, which is that, that owners of Chanigu can free men and women, have the power and the right to, 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 to have dominion over creation, to not live in fear of predators, mm. wild animals, the wilderness, and, the, and what gives you that power is is uh, learning self-defense, right. you know. Living out here too, we don't have a huge security team. Also, I have to protect my own home. That's the first time in my life I have to do that. Yeah. I am the security, I am the police here, you know. No, not the police like that police, you know, but I'm the protector here. Right. I have to, if, if somebody attacks my house, I'm the one who has to fight, right? right? And so, like empowering my wife, empowering my, my, my baby girl, empowering my, the women in my house, you know, to to get over that fear of conditioning that they've been told that women cannot handle these things. Mm -hmm. They get over that and learn firearms, learn uh, Kali extrema, extrema, like stick and knife fighting, learn martial arts and jujitsu and, and, and all these kind of things, which are very dangerous things, but learn them and learn and understand that those are martial, those are arts which empower you. Right. You know? And that can only happen in America, really, now right. in the world. Right. Everything else has become so centralized. Right. And that's why the totalitarians are focusing on America to destroy that remnant. Right. 
But that's so important for Chanigo because in Chanigo, the right of self-defense is a fundamental right that God gives us mm -hmm. as owners of Chanigo. Mm -hmm. And in the in the in the you know, uh, and in the instance, and it's not only for hunting; it's it's also in the instance that the government is so corrupt and so evil and becomes so strayed so far from the founding principles of Chanyuk that the people have the power and the means and the firepower to be able to rebel against right. a government and its monopoly of force. Right. That the people have also the power of force right. to even violently take back what is theirs, which is their God-given rights and freedom. So that's why Chani, it's fundamental to Chanikuk and the Kingdom of God. And that's why Father brought us back to America, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, to to embrace that that aspect of being a free person, you know, and that responsibility of what Father called in the Kingdom of being a peace police and peace militia person, mm -hmm. you know, to to be your brother's keeper, to to truly be your neighbor's protector, to truly. Be your community's protector. Right. right. That all citizens have that right and duty. Right. right. You know, to empower their children to be free. You know, so I really didn't understand the value of the Second Amendment because I had been such a pacifist for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, until I understood the dynamics of freedom. Right. And the sociology of freedom. Right. The political system of freedom right. compared to communism. That it's only with that further understanding and education and because now I'm educated, right. um, that I can see the difference between those things, and I think that it's it's the gift of being here right. and being able to exercise those freedoms. Still, in America, is probably the only place where you can do that right. freely. All, you know, although it's fading, but still, it's it's higher than anywhere else in the world right. in terms of true freedom like, in that respect. 